Hi guys, how are you doing? This is B from Tech Century and welcome to my rant about the Moto 360. Now before we actually start into this video, I want to say that there might be some explicit language in this video and there won't be any fancy edits because this is just a plain rant on the Moto 360 that was now, I guess, kind of announced by Motorola and is on sale at least in the US. But let's get started after the intro. Before we actually start talking about the Moto 360 itself, uh, the whole launch was just fucked up. I mean, uh, the Motorola 360 was first shown, I think, four or five months ago, uh, actually with the launch of Android Wear. Then we saw it again at uh, Google I.O. And now we had this event scheduled for the 4th uh, of September. So that was actually a Thursday. And basically Motorola sent out invitations like weeks ago that were all over the media. And so basically me and a lot of other people were just waiting for the event to start on the 4th. It was not something around uh, IFA in Berlin, the big consumer electronic shows that's currently going on, but it was actually something in Chicago. But then some media outlets said, well, there won't be any event. Uh, there'll just be the news coming out and so on. And then suddenly Motorola said, ah, no, we'll just change that to tomorrow. So expect the news on the 5th. And then sometime around midnight or something, some media outlets actually broke the non-disclosure agreement and they just published their videos about the Motorola 360, the Moto G and the Moto X. And that's basically how the news came out. So that was at least for me a big fail. I mean, after such a long wait, they didn't even bother to have an announcement. And then they didn't even like stick to their date, which was the 4th of September. They just said like one day before, oh, we'll just postpone it to the 5th. And then basically all media outlets just broke the NDA, which is just incredibly stupid. I've never seen a messed up launch like this before, especially for such highly anticipated devices like the Moto G, the Moto X, and of course the Moto 360. And to me, it's just absolutely unbelievable that Motorola didn't even like schedule a specific time and they just let everybody wait and then just the media outlet said, well, screw this, we'll just break the NDA and we'll publish our videos nonetheless without actually having some relevant information. So that was like the first thing that really bothered me about how Motorola really launched these devices. Also, like when the NDA was actually broken and all the videos were out there about the Moto 360, it took them like another 10 hours, I think, to actually get them up for order and that only in the US. So that's another big like... Uh, point of me where I'm just like completely pissed off because if there's one thing that companies in general, not only Motorola, but companies in general should learn from Apple in my opinion, then it is to launch products globally or at least in like 20 or 30 countries. And no, the Moto 360 won't be available, I think also in the UK and here, for example, in Germany until October. Now, all right, I was pissed off because of the announcement, like how it went down. I was pissed off because the fact that the Moto 360 won't come to Germany and the UK until October. Not really the worst part yet, but then actually the news broke about the battery life of the Moto 360 and that was just the biggest letdown I've actually had in this year, I think, in terms of tech, of course. So uh, I would basically consider it the biggest fail of tech in 2014 so far. Uh, so far, we've seen amazing videos about the Moto 360, how it was designed, how the round display looked and all that crap. Too bad that the best design and the nicest display doesn't help if the battery is out of power. So actually, the first review was published by Wall Street Journal and it said that you have to recharge the watch twice a day. And I was like, crap, that has to be a mistake. They mean probably like every two days. Not quite, because uh, then The Verge actually published their review as well and they said, nah, you might get around 12 hours of battery life if you're lucky, but that's it. And then even other YouTubers like, uh, I think Austin or Duncan was it, uh, who actually published a photo of his Moto 360 after like half a day and it had 60% of battery left. So this really seems to be the case that the Moto 360 at least doesn't last longer than a day. Uh, if we're just positive, so in the worst case you have to charge it twice a day, maybe if you're good then you only have to charge it once a day, but that has to be like the biggest downfall of this product. And basically also, uh, 
just what's killing the product in general because again the base display the nice design doesn't help if the battery is just out all the time and especially on a watch i think it's incredibly annoying if you have to just take off the watch put it on a charger now fortunately the uh, moto 360 had, has wireless charging but that still means that you have to take it off your wrist so that sucks nonetheless and i just have to say i didn't see this coming i was so excited for the moto 360 i had the money ready to buy one and now the fact that it can't even get through a day of charge is just basically a deal breaker for me. And I really want to hear what you guys have to say about this. For me, it's a deal breaker. I've seen comments on the reviews, for example, from The Verge of people saying, well, I'm only going to work eight hours and then I'm back so I can charge it again. And for me, it's just incredible how people are already looking for excuses to justify a 12 hour battery life. And for me, there is just no excuse because if we look back at the launch of the original uh, Gear smartwatches by Samsung, they had two days battery life and everybody was just bashing them that two days is not enough for available. And now one and a half years, two years later, Motorola is coming along and they announce, well, we have one day of battery life if you're lucky and if you don't use it too much. Seriously? I mean, it's just so fucked up. I I personally can't get over the fact that the battery life is just so awful. And the worst part about this is actually that I don't find the reason why the battery life is so bad. Because if we take a look, I think the Moto 360, I might be a little bit wrong on that, has a battery with a capacity of 320 milliamp hours. And if you compare that to other smartwatches, for example, like the LG G watch, like the Gear Life, they have basically the same size battery and they get through two days, maybe even a little bit more. And now we have the Moto 360, basically the same battery size, and it doesn't get through one day. And to me, honestly, there's no excuse, especially with the wearable. I mean, two days wouldn't really be much, but it would be acceptable, at least in my mind. Again, I'm looking forward to what you guys have to say in the comments. Maybe one day is enough, but then I would expect one day to be 24 hours and not 12, because at least I'm personally, if I'm going to work, I'm usually longer away than 10 hours. And I certainly don't want to like put my watch on the charger the first thing when I'm home because otherwise it runs out of battery. I mean, I have that problem with my smartphone already and I certainly don't want to have two devices that I have to charge twice or maybe three times a day to actually get it working. And that's also why I'm so disappointed in the Moto 360. I had such high hopes. And honestly, the only reason that I can actually imagine why the battery life is so bad is the processor because I believe that Motorola is the only company in the well, smartwatch space, at least in terms of Android Wear, that doesn't use a Snapdragon 400 processor by Qualcomm, but they actually use some kind of Qi OMAP processor. And I assume that thing has to be incredibly power inefficient or something. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. But again, the battery size is similar to other smartwatches. Maybe the display also takes a lot of energy. That might be possible because some reviews said that the display is very bright outside and very easy to read. So maybe it's just too bright in general. But I have to say, I'm just completely baffled and I think that's basically the worst case scenario that could happen to the Moto 360 that just happened because it's a complete deal breaker, at least for me. And another thing that I want to mention is something that's overlooked, I think, and that's the fact that Android Wear specifically has like a mode built in that always shows the time. So that's like an always on display. And we find this on the LG G watch. We also find this here on the Gear Live and the Moto 360 just doesn't have it. So basically, if you don't use the Moto 360, it doesn't show anything. And that's understandable because it has an LCD IPS display, which basically uses power. And it doesn't matter if there's just like a little part of the display illuminated or if it's the whole display. And so probably the battery life with this always on feature of Android Wear on the Moto 360, I assume would be like three to six hours. So I see why they don't enable this, but I personally have to say, as good as the Moto 360 looks, I think it looks way worse when the display is off. And you have to consider that if you purchase one, the display is off 90% of the time probably. And that's another deal breaker for me. Also, before I forget this, as you probably know, when Android Wear was announced, Google said Android Wear is optimized not only for square displays, but also for round displays. So here came the Moto 360 and now we also have the LG G Watch R announced. Well, it turns out the optimization isn't quite what we were expecting. So it's not like the display layout is specifically for round displays. Basically what they do is just, they take the square view and then crop in a circle. So yeah, that looked stupid, but anyways, that's what they do. So some elements of the UI actually get cut off and that's the 
the UI elements by Google, not in like third party apps. So it's basically just a cropped in view. So there's no optimization, there's just a cropped in view, which is ridiculous. Uh, I'm pretty sure that a similar solution, for example, if Samsung would want to do this on their uh, Tizen OS, I mean, a cropped in view is no challenge at all. And any OS should be able to do that within like two days. So Sigler display optimization, my ass, I have to say. And so just big disappointment in terms of software. The battery life is just incredibly horrible. And I have some just notes right here. And I just have to say in general, even though OLED or AMOLED, as Samsung calls it, is debatable on smartphones, whether it's better or not, whether it's oversaturated and all that crap, I think on wearables, it's the only way to go. Because with an OLED display, for those who don't know, actually only the part of the display that's illuminated actually uses power. So it's incredibly energy efficient, especially if you have a dark background. For example, like one of the just Motorola watch face that looks incredible. There's basically just black and then just a few watch elements are actually in white or blue. And so that would be perfect for an OLED display and wouldn't take much power at all. So again, I think it's debatable on whether OLED is better here on smartphones, TVs and whatsoever. But I think here on smartwatches we really have to go OLED or the manufacturers have to go OLED because that's actually the only way to achieve an always on display without just ruining the battery life altogether. So yeah, not quite as explicit this video as I thought it would be, but uh, I just had to get this off my chest because I'm so pissed off at Motorola. The launch was fucked up, the battery life is fucked up and I'm just incredibly disappointed and I really want to hear what you guys have to say. Again, this channel is where gadgets get personal, so I take this personally and I was excited for a couple of months. I had the money ready and uh, now I'll have to look at other alternatives, I guess. Maybe the uh, Gear S is an alternative if the battery life is okay. Because honestly, the Tizen OS, as much as I don't want to see it on a smartphone, it worked for notifications just fine on my, uh, what was it called, Gear Fit smart band. So, um, I wouldn't really have any problem with actually buying the gear with the Tizen OS, especially because I'm not convinced yet how good actually Android Wear is, at least up to now, because it's pretty new. And yeah, I'm just disappointed. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe and also hit a like. Hit a dislike if you don't like this video and I just want to hear your opinions in the comment section down below. I really want to get a discussion started here on the battery life on the Moto360 and of course also this disastrous launch. Thanks for watching. See you next time.